with the ID5 mid-sized coupe SUV, Volkswagen offers its most aspirational EV yet. It certainly has a dash more pavement presence than the ID4 SUV it's entirely based upon, and in top GTX hot hatch form, it better showcases the brand's more potent all-wheel drive dual motor powertrain. Volkswagen EV, small boys might want to pin on their bedroom walls. Maybe not quite, but Wolfsburg is getting there. There's a bit to adapt to if this is your first experience of EV motoring. Uh, no gear stick, no handbrake, no ignition key, and just the sound of silence as the fixed ratio transmission blends an almost endless wave of torque into meaningful and surprisingly rapid forward progress. Uh, the forward thrust away from rest isn't quite as abrupt as it is in some smaller EVs. Uh, a lot of that is to do with this car's prodigious two-ton curb weight, and that's a factor which affects most air areas of this car's drive demeanour, uh, sometimes helpfully and sometimes not. Uh, that of course is the legacy of the substantial battery packs that it has to carry about. Uh, the 77 kilowatt hour battery alone, the only one offered to ID5 customers, weighs a portly 493 kilos. Despite all that, the performance on offer is reasonably brisk, or it is at least with this 204 PS Pro Performance model. This makes uh, 62 miles an hour in 8.4 seconds two seconds quicker than the 177 PS Pro model, which consequently feels a bit lethargic by EV standards. Either way, uh, Volkswagen claims a driving range of up to 316 miles. Like Volkswagen's original post-war Beetle, mainstream versions of this car are rear-driven, and when you drive an ID.5 in town, you realise the real advantages of placing the powertrain, uh, the electric motor, and the associated single-speed automatic gearbox on the back axle, thereby freeing up the front wheels for steering duties. Uh, the result is a London taxi-like 10.2-metre turning circle. Beyond the city limits, that drive format allows for a near 50-50 the almost perfect weight distribution which together with the low center of gravity that's provided by the central battery pack placement helps to disguise the portly weight this SUV has to carry around. Traction through the turns is excellent and body roll is checked by firm damping cleverly engineered for suppleness over porous surfaces all of which ought to provide the recipe for a decently sporting EV. And in some ways it does, uh, though the steering, while it's accurate, offers disappointingly little real feedback. If you do prioritise performance in your choice of ID.5, uh, Volkswagen wants you to consider the top flagship GTX variant, which sees the 77 kilowatt hour battery mated to electric motors on both axles, which delivers four-wheel drive capability and a more potent 299 PS total output. Uh, that version gets an extra traction mode to add to the other drive settings common across the lineup. Uh, there's comfort, sport, and individual. Plus, you get the eco setting too, which to maximise range you'll need to frequently use in combination with the available B regenerative braking function and that slows the car significantly when you come off the accelerator. Whatever ID.5 model you select, your charging regime should be relatively straightforward. Uh, there's a WeCharge app which helps you to find and to use over 150,000 public charge points. An AC one phase 7.4 kilowatt wall box would replenish the battery of mainstream models from zero in about 12 and a quarter hours. Uh, what about if you find a public rapid charger along your route? Well, the latest version of this car's 77 kilowatt hour battery has upped maximum charging capacity to 135 kilowatts, which means that at a DC3 100 kilowatt charge point, a mainstream ID5 like this one can be replenished from 5 to 80 percent in 29 minutes. Exterior design is obviously important to you if you're after an ID5, otherwise, you'd have paid less for an ID4 instead. And the SUV coupe silhouette that we first saw on the brand's ID Cross concept car certainly delivers more pavement presence than you'll get with this car's showroom stablemate. Uh, it's embellished by roof rails and big wheels. Now, whether you think it's as powerful, confident, and elegant as Volkswagen thinks it is, will be a subjective call. 
All the key drive stuff sits over the rear axle, principally the single speed gearbox and the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor, which has been mated to it. Uh, they're both very efficiently packaged. Volkswagen says that uh, both those elements, together with the associated uh, control electronics, collectively weigh just 90 kilos and they could fit into a typical gym bag. All of this is powered by a high voltage battery, which has been very efficiently arranged in the underbody to save space which leaves nothing to sit here at the front end but a few auxiliary units like the air conditioning compressor and of course the steering rack enough of the outside let's take a look in the cabin there's no need for a gear lever an ignition slot or a handbrake and that's just the beginning of the things that you're going to have to adjust to in a cabin uh, designed around what volkswagen calls an open space concept. You sit quite high on top of all those batteries and the interior design has an airy but minimalist and rather clinical feel which Volkswagen has tried unsuccessfully to lift by imprinting play and pause symbols on the two footwell pedals. Uh, predictably it's all the same as you'll get in the ID4 which means that there's not much in the way of switch gear and of course you'll have to do without uh, conventional instruments too. All of this is replaced by a couple of TFT displays, a little 5.3 inch one behind the steering wheel and a main Discover Max tablet of 12 inches in size in the centre of the dash. Build quality, generally good, but cheaper plastics betray the cost cutting necessary to undergird all that sophisticated EV technology. Uh, the gear selector is housed in a right hand protrusion from the instrument binnacle, although here there's the additional novelty in the fact that the whole binnacle moves up and down as you adjust the wheel. Uh, other adjustments are done using either touch sensitive buttons like these fiddly sliders for the climate system or with voice control which is prefaced by the command hello ID. Right, time to take a look out back. Uh, rear cabin space was one of the things we really liked about the ID4 but with 25 millimeters less roof height will that be compromised here? To some extent, yes, headroom is compromised not only by that more swept back silhouette, but also by the fact that Volkswagen has standardized this vast panoramic glass roof for ID5 customers. And the result is that anyone traveling here that's over six feet tall will find their hair brushing the ceiling. Still, you'd expect to have to make a slight compromise in that regard to get this more stylish body shape. In terms of space for your knees and legs, as in the ID4, it's all very impressive, as so often these days in a mid-sized EV, uncompromised by the packaging needs of a combustion powertrain. Uh, despite having the driveway footprint of a Volkswagen Tiguan, the brand claims interior space more akin to the larger Tiguan Allspace, and that's pretty much how it feels. It's also a wider cabin than you'd expect a car of this size to be able to provide. And with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could actually fit reasonably easily into the back of this car. Let's finish with a look in the boot. Once the wide hatch rises, the space provided at 549 litres is surprisingly six litres larger than that of the ID4. The rear bench doesn't split flexibly 40-20-40 like it does in, say, the BMW iX3 we mentioned earlier, but Volkswagen does at least provide a ski hatch so longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Uh, flattening the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 1,561 litres of capacity loaded to roof height. 